Welcome to the Startup Leader Show, where we learn lessons from startup founders and executives. I'm your host, Lisa Dreer, and I'm really excited to introduce our guest for today, James Pina. He is the co-founder and COO of Wave Motion Launch. Welcome to the show, James. Great to be here. Nice to uh, finally talk, Lisa, and uh, yeah, hopefully people can learn some lessons because that's that's really a big thing. I'm really a fan of that Silicon Valley phrase, you don't know what you don't know. And I did not know a lot when I started this journey back in uh, January of 2020, I believe. Oh my gosh. Well, we're really excited to hear your perspectives and lessons and all of that. But maybe we can start by having you talk a little bit about your background and how you came to be part of founding Wave Motion Launch and like tell us a little bit about what Wave Motion Launch is doing as well. Sure. Uh, I'll start off with my background because there really isn't much to tell, I guess. Uh, so I have a uh, bachelor's in physics from MIT. I originally was looking at getting into the high particle, the high energy particle physics space at first. And during my undergrad career, I did a lot of work at particle accelerators. Then I kind of got interested in fusion and that's what I wanted to go to grad school for. So I went to a PhD program at the University of Washington uh, starting in 2015. That was at the aeronautics and astronautics department. And I worked on a fusion uh, experimental group there, uh, kind of learning plasma physics. And then partway through, I uh, meet my co-founder and I've always thought to myself, I want to work for myself that I want to have that tenuous control over my career path. Uh, so after meeting him and kind of discussing the ideas that we had, my co-founder Finn Van Donkelar, the uh, CEO and of uh, Wave Motion, we just decided to start building and building requires money. We decided to go get money. Uh, we started entering entrepreneurship competitions because even though we were in the aeronautics and astronautics department, uh, we really didn't have a lot of support from them for this new space launch. So we ended up going to the business school at UW, UW Foster. And while we had the engineering side all figured out, it was the business side that was really the learning experience. And after going through the business plan competition and seeing where this technology would go, we just decided to start Wave Motion in 2020 while we were still in grad school. And we stepped right out of grad school and into uh, our career. Uh, so that that's that's one of the lessons, by the way. That's something I don't recommend, but I can get to that later. Uh, so that's my background. Now for what Wave Motion actually does, we are solving the problem of launch. So with launch vehicles, missiles, rockets, anything that uses a rocket engine, you have to carry all the fuel that you need to get you from point A to point B. And what this does, if for anyone in the audience that knows the rocket equation, it creates an exponential rise in the amount of fuel that you need in order to reach a certain velocity. So that's, in our opinion, a non-starter for space launch. And the whole um, kind of raison d'etre that uh, Wave Motion was founded on. So my co-founder Finn invented in his basement with a box of scraps this new launcher that's our uh, core product now, the jet gun. And what the jet gun does is that it fires a jet of gas that is optimized to push another projectile in front of it rather than itself. So it's like taking a rocket engine, flipping it on its head, and using the thrust to shoot the payload. Now, we looked at this, and it had some good potential for space launch, but we knew that we could do better. Uh, so the while we still work on it for the defense side of our business and the U.S. Navy is our current sponsor and customer with an OTA contract through uh, Office of Naval Research. That's how we're supporting this research. We are working on a new space launcher uh, that will lower the acceleration. So the jet gun kind of acts like a uh, kick stage, very high acceleration. It's similar to what other kinetic launch companies like Spin Launch and hyperscience is long shot what they're doing, uh, but that's not compatible with the general uh, direction the space economy is going. You're still see payloads really won't be able to handle high accelerations. We're moving back towards larger satellites instead of small satellites. So small sat launch is going to be consolidated and start uh, having its costs lowered. 
So we're looking at using this uh, technology called the Macron Beamer to accelerate large payloads, multiple tons, without the use of a rocket engine. And now, why are we going through all this trouble? Without a rocket engine, you now have a vastly simpler vehicle. Uh, and your payload fraction goes up. Instead of now having this huge tank of fuel that you need to bring with you and only 5% of your vehicle being payload, if you're lucky, now you can have a vehicle that is 50% payload capacity because you're leaving all your fuel on the ground. And what you are essentially doing is beaming it to the launch vehicle as it's accelerating. Wow. That is so amazing. When I first heard about you guys, I was so interested in what you were doing and you just answered so many of my questions that I was thinking as you were talking. So <laughs> you know, I was thinking, well, how big of a payload? And so amazing that you can get multiple tons, um, you know, into orbit using well, this. That's the vision one day, right? So right, right now our, our projectiles are smaller. Mm -hmm. um, about the size of a missile and that's where our work with the office of naval research comes in is that uh, just like this technology has the potential to increase the payload and decrease the cost of space launch it has the potential to send missiles farther and faster uh, for less um, cost per shot so when you when you look at the cost per shot of artillery you have like this bag charge that you put inside of a gun and then you fire and then your shell kind of just lands where it lands with this, with the jet gun system that we've built and that we're building for the Navy, you can have a missile kind of get that initial velocity for that artillery shot and then still be able to do its mission. Uh, so you have you have a lower cost of launch there as well and more flexibility just overall if this system gets developed, it's going to be a very good thing for the uh, soldiers, sailors, and Marines. Hmm, interesting. That's a little bit darker side of the technology. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, you know, Let's not pretend that the space and defense industries aren't joined at the hip. Uh, yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, not to sound too cynical, I really don't mind where our funding comes from, defense or civilian space. I will say that civilian space, and the more that you can go towards civilian side, the easier things get. But again, maybe maybe we're getting into the lessons here, and I don't want to leave from it. Yeah, so let's let's jump into that. And you know, one of the things that I always start with is what have been your biggest keys to success so far? I mean, you've gotten wave motion launched. Uh so you know, what have been the biggest keys to that so far? Uh so oof, I, it's hard to call that, you know, success. Um I'd say the biggest thing, the first thing I have written is persistence. So if you can't be a success, at least refuse to die. <laughs> um, having, having kind of that tenacity and that persistence through your mission will make it easier uh, when there are times where, say, you're not money, where you're waiting for contracts or invoices to come in, just kind of remembering what you're doing and why you're doing it and uh, pushing along. That's, that's really, you know, the, the first and last thing, of course. Um, but it wouldn't be keys if there was only one. So this, this is a bit more specific, and this is important, uh, knowing your regulatory environment. That's probably something that's going to be very important for defense. And if there's anyone that's thinking about starting a startup in defense, you know, definitely check out the regulations, understand what you need, understand your ITAR, your EAR, understand CMMC, you know, understand, uh, you know, D DLA joint certification program, understand, you know, facility clearance, there is a lot. And that's kind of why I say, you know, the, the closer you can get to the civilian side, the better uh, things will be for you. Uh, but especially in defense, not knowing your regulatory environment can be a non starter. So make sure you have all your registrations, all of your certificates, all of your certifications, all those things absolutely have to be squared away. Uh, for you to even start thinking about the business or the contract that you land. Yeah. And sure. something that I don't have run uh, here, I guess, uh, is as cliched as it is, you know, a willingness to pivot. Um, we could have gone on developing the jet gun for space launch as well. But again, we really didn't see the market opportunity there. So that's why we're pivoting to building this second launcher technology. And even though it can complicate the story, especially when we're pitching to investors, when we're pitching uh, to program managers for new contracts, 
uh, it's really going to be necessary to kind of take the promise and the advantages of kinetic space launch and truly economize them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, those, those are uh, my keys to success for some definition of success. Got it. So I think you might have alluded to this a little bit in the opening. And that is, if you were to start all over, are there things that you would do different? All right. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to frame a lot of this as advice. Um, just because I know there's the one, the biggest piece of advice, but I do want to give more than just one big piece of advice. Um, for one, I definitely would not have finished my graduate school career. Um, as you know, funny as that says, as that sounds, looking back, it probably would have been a better play for me to just drop out and then go steal money from Jeff Bezos for a few years working for Blue Origin, like every other space startup founder does. Um, yeah, just when you're not interested in something and you're not motivated by it, uh, there's really no point to doing it unless you need to survive. And that's that's kind of what I was doing, right? I was using grad school as my job, but I was seriously underselling my time. Uh, in a PhD program compared to just going to work in industry, sucking it up a bit. Uh, what else would I have done differently? Um, probably try to get more people early on. So Wave Motion is a very small team and we feel that quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be difficult to hire. We are currently, you know, we have a few interns that we pay, uh, you know, part-time wage to, uh, but Wave Motion's core staff is only three people. Uh, so maybe if I had brought on more people earlier, uh, could have distributed some of that workload, gone after more opportunities. And also getting to your customer, I'd say. So in the very in the very first few years of this business, we kind of, and we still are, it's, it's a necessary evil for people kind of in the defense industry and space industry to play the SBIR circuit. Um, but it's definitely not an efficient way. Like there are even very competent companies that I know of that, you know, get refused SBIR grants for arbitrary reasons. You really getting in front of your customer is maybe this is more of a roadblock uh, workaround, but getting in front of your customer early on is, or not even the customer, but the person that's going to pay is uh, yeah. very important. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's really the biggest thing I would have done different, though, is uh, grad school, because man, man, was that a waste of time getting my PhD. <laughs> I don't even I don't even go by doctor. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where you met your co-founder, right? Yeah, you know, thing, things could have played out differently. Um, I'm glad I'm glad to have gone. I'm just, I guess, glad not to uh, sad that I uh, decided to finish. <laughs> gotcha. But that's, gotcha. I guess that's, you know personal opinions. And I, I'll say one thing I'll do different, uh, I would do differently is focus less on my regrets. You gotta, gotta kind of keep focusing on the moment. Yeah. Uh, otherwise you're just going to get overwhelmed. Indeed. Indeed. So you mentioned roadblocks. One of the things that I think we all run into are these roadblocks as we're growing our businesses, or like you're saying, trying to figure out what path to take. Um, what have you found have been kind of the best ways of dealing with those working around or through or over these roadblocks? Uh, well, you know, I don't want to repeat my answer from earlier, but persistence is really one of them. There are going to be times where in a startup, you're just, you know, not spinning your wheels because there's always going to be something that you could be doing, but you're just waiting for something to happen, right? Mm -hmm. An invoice to come in, a payment from a customer to come in, a contract to get awarded or finalized. Um, just kind of having that persistence and that willing that willingness to grind and just let letting time take care of the problem because sometimes with problems all you can do is wait uh, a lot a lot of that in government work is hurry up and wait you know i'm sure there are some people in the audience familiar with that phrase uh then talking i alluded to this earlier talking with your customer uh, or more important than even your customer your end user talking with the person that's responsible for payments um Real, sometimes being able to renegotiate contracts uh, will get you around those roadblocks. Uh, being able to, you know, not stall for time necessarily, but let your customer know that things are going differently from how you envisioned, which mm -hmm. happens all the time, especially in government contracting with design changes and everything like that. So uh, really, really talking with your paying customer working that route 
and maintaining an open channel of communication will help you to resolve any problems as you're trying to fulfill those customers' needs. Yeah, yeah. What would you say is kind of the most valuable business lesson that you've learned so far in this whole process of uh, launching this? I have, I have written down three times here, so I'm going to say it three times. Cash is king, cash is king, cash is king, okay? Um, it really is no fun to start a startup stepping right out of school with no money. Uh, and that, you know, a lot of people like to crap on Jeff Bezos a bit for, you know, getting $300,000 from his parents and from his DE Shaw friends, but there is no way in hell he could have ever started Amazon without that amount of startup capital. And that's, you know, kind of really important. Manage your cash flow. Try to have money coming in all the time. And really make sure you have a good cash cushion before you spring out, right? Like if, if you're starting a software startup, not that I know about software startups, you should probably have at least 50 grand. If you're doing anything with hardware, kind of electronics, firmware, closer to 100 grand. And then if you're doing work like I'm doing, where you've got metal to cut, you've got heavy hardware components, you really better have enough money to start kitting out a proper machine shop. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that you can't do it on less money. We found for the first two years of the company, we pretty much only spent around uh, $20,000 on our test campaigns and building our prototypes. We worked very cheap. We worked very fast, uh, but we worked very hard. And yeah. so having money, money will solve all your problems. Okay. <laughs> Have money before you start your startup. That's where your seed funding comes in. There are, there are no mysterious billionaires that will come out of the woodwork and offer you a big check. It's got to come out of your wallet first. So that way people see that you're invested in making this idea work. Because sure. Otherwise, you're going to be on the struggle bus. And then manage your cash flow. Make sure you know your monthly expenses, taxes, you know, fees, subscriptions, all those things. Cash is king. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is there is there kind of one main piece of advice you would give other founders? Yeah, and it, it sounds kind of similar, but uh, just make sure you're ready. You know, like it's a very hard thing and you're not going to be ready ever. You know, you're not, you're not going to be ready for just all the curveballs that you get thrown your way, just like in life. Um, but, you know, going, going back to the money, make sure you have a good wad. Make sure you've got a good nest egg to throw into this business. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're emotionally prepared. You know, this is very different from working a nine to five job. It's even different from being a uh, PhD research assistant, you know, where the, the hours are longer. I get paid less and I work even more than when I was a PhD assistant. Um, hopefully that'll be changing soon though. But uh, yeah, you, ha you have to be prepared in kind of every facet of your life because it's in a lot of ways like going on a journey. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that it's as hard as being, you know, Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea and making your way through the American wilderness, but uh, it is trailblazing. And so mm -hmm. you, you have to make sure that you're packed and prepared before you go trailblazing. Let me put it that way. I love that. Okay. So one last question that I want to end with, and that is, if you could make one prediction about the future, what would it be? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, th this is probably going to be the part that sounds a little dark. Um, but things are going to get worse before they get better. Be prepared for not good circumstances in the next decade. Um, the regulatory environment is, you know, tightening up more. You know, we're getting out of this quantitative easing environment that we've been in for the last 10 years. There's a lot of back and forth talk about how much it's actually affected startup growth. Um, but I think there's no question we have seen increasing amounts of frauds and well, something Michael Burry said about the complexity of instruments has also been increasing. You know, there's a line between Theranos back, you know, in 2015, whenever that was going on to FTX now, and that line, you know, is starting to go down. The easy money is getting out. Um, not to, uh, not, not to show myself too much, but uh, defense is going to be a good place, I think, in the next 10 years where we see the world is going. Um, but luckily, I also think that after that, there's going to be a renaissance. I'm betting big on the space economy. I really think that, you know, once we make it through this decade, there's going to be a bounce back and that 
that future space age economy that people have been promised since the 1960s is really going to come to fruition. We kind of have all the technological pieces now. So I'd say buckle up, you know, because it's going to be a bumpy ride, but uh, hopefully there's light at the end of that tunnel. Wow. Okay. Well, James, I want to thank you so much for being here today. It's been really exciting to learn about Wave Motion Launch and to hear some of the advice that um, that you've given us today. I know it's just incredibly valuable for everyone. So thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. I hope that uh, people can uh, you know learn from that advice again. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Wave Motion, you can go to our website, wavemotionlaunch.space. Or you can check out our pitch on Space Ventures. So we have a crowdfunding campaign, a Reg CF crowdfunding campaign, uh, where we're selling convertible notes in the company as kind of our pre-seed round. We wanted to really open this up to the people. So you can check out kind of our full pitch and future plans on Space Ventures as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That's wonderful. So yeah, guys, go check that out. And we'll see you next time on the Startup Leader Show. Have a good day, everyone.